and uh, now we would like to, to draw the attention to the panel uh, which has been formed here in the studio. Uh, to the left is His Excellency Valdemar Kutz, which is the ambassador of Chile to Norway. And then we have the ambassador of Mexico, His Excellency Ulysses Canchola Guitares. And then, uh, and then we have the Brazilian ambassador to Norway, His Excellency uh, uh, George Monteiro Prata. So uh, thank you very much for attending. Um, I would like to, to, um, to kick up off with the, with the question. And um, uh, so one of the issues that uh, we see on, um, on uh, fisheries crime is that, um, that international cooperation is very important, uh, both on a political, but also on a practical level. So how do you see uh, that international cooperation can be strengthened uh, between governments? So um, I would like to, to ask you, um, Valdemar, to, to, uh, to maybe give a comment to that. And uh, please join if you have some comments uh, on this question. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for the invitation. It's a privilege to be here today. Uh, my country is a, has a very strong oceanic vocation. It is the 10th th largest uh, fishing nation of the world the fifth major uh, exporter of uh, seafood, and the second in aquaculture of salmon after Norway. So uh, the, the ocean, the ocean economy is very important for us. We also uh, signed as the first Latin American nation the Copenhagen Declaration, which is the political basis. It's the roadmap for uh, addressing these uh, very important issues. Uh, tax crime, uh, uh, money laundering, um, uh, uh, and others, oh, illegal fishing as well. And uh, well, we see this uh, uh, as it is a, a transnational issue. We have to uh, foster uh, cooperation, international cooperation and regional cooperation through capacity building, uh, through a, a, a cross-border uh, uh, cooperation. And uh, we have done so in our region, in the South Pacific. We have an institution called the Permanent Commission for the South Pacific. And in, in the, within that institution, together with other countries such as uh, Colombia, Peru and Ecuador, we have uh, established uh, uh, seminars, symposia, and uh, other um, capacity building measures in order to address these transnational crimes. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, 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 cooperated with uh, other countries within the framework of the, of the South Pacific uh, Regional Fisheries Management Organization, also uh, uh, in, in, within uh, Within some seminars and uh, and and so on. So we yes we believe that this is something that we have to address globally and regionally. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mexico. Do you have a view on on this issue? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm I'm particularly honored to be sharing this um, this panel with uh, the your colleagues of the region. Latin America plays a really an important role in this regard. And uh, for one, Mexico also is uh, playing its role in that regard. But uh, let me just add up to what my colleague from Chile was saying, and let me take a broader perspective. Of course, it is important for us to be cooperating in the basics, namely exchanging information, exchanging good practices and lessons learned. Of course, it is always useful to learn from each other, mainly on capacity building. But there is another aspect that we should be aware of. And if I may, I would like to take a broader perspective. First of all, we are dealing with a transnational, uh, uh, um, transborder issue. This implies that we don't have a central international entity where we can, so to speak, exchange information or, or cross-reference information, a clearinghouse, so to speak. So that's really a challenge. We have tried this in the past. The Extent uh, Commission on Sustainable Development tried to do that. Unic Paulus 
also in the last 20 years has been struggling with this. But again, we need to recognize that there we have a challenge. Second, the other challenge that we also must recognize is that we have a state reporting fatigue, and not only in the area of the real mouth fisheries, but um, at least according to my experience, I've seen this in transnational organized crime, corruption, terrorism, even human rights. So we have to be aware of these challenges. How can we engage them or try to resolve them? One way forward would be, for instance, to come up with a matrix where we can identify what kind of mechanisms we have, international, regional, what kind of instruments we have, both soft law and hard law, mm -hmm. and how can we make the right mix in order to tackle these issues properly. Uh, again, this goes hand in hand with other, other very important issue, which is awareness. And there, um, this kind of fora, like the one we are participating, and of course, initiatives like the high panel are very, very important. Thank you very much again for the opportunity. Thank you. And um, uh, Brazil, do you have a, maybe a comment to, to this uh, issue? Well, first of all, I also would like to thank you for this invitation. As you know, Brazil is the country with uh, the biggest uh, coast uh, in, in, in the South Atlantic and all issues uh, concerning you see, the oceans are important for us and this specific issue of uh, illegal fisheries is also uh, affecting uh, Brazil as it's affecting many other countries. Um, I, I believe that this is a very important uh, matter that should be addressed in two levels, because as my colleagues have said, this is an international uh, or, and a transnational issue. And, and, and we have to address this problem at this level. But we also have to address uh, this problem at a regional level. And I say so because I think it's easier to have concrete programs if we address this level in, in a regional uh, level. Uh, as, as we know, uh, illegal fisheries has to do not only with criminality, but it has to do with labor issues, it has to do uh, with environmental issues, it, it has to do with, with many other different aspects. So uh, 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 I think that if we start to seeing ways on how to cooperate in the regional level. And if we get assistance and financing from international organizations, that should, uh, that should be a good way to start with uh, uh, coping with this problem. Mm. Thank you very much. So um, um, another issue is, is the political awareness about this. Um, my own experience is that there is, there is a lack of political awareness globally for all this, uh, this complicated issues relating to fisheries crime. Um, could, could you, from your perspective, um, uh, say something about how important political awareness is on this issue? And, and maybe also to elaborate on um, how this maybe can evolve in the future. So the, the floor is, uh, yeah. yeah, Valdemar. Well, thank you for the question. Uh, I believe it's awareness is mm. uh, very, very relevant, mm. especially politically. Uh, so therefore, I would suggest, for example, uh, to address this uh, in, in, within the framework of the United Nations General Assembly. There's a resolution that is addressing this issue. We, we can, uh, this is a, uh, resolution 62112. Uh, we can also uh, uh, address uh, all of these issues within the U UN Security Council. Norway is a member, uh, will be a member, uh, 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 a non permanent uh, member in, in, in the near future, mm. uh, because there are issues that affect uh, international security. Mm. Um, and then, obviously, all of the countries, the 28, so far as I know, that have adhered to the Copenhagen Declaration should formally do so. Mm. So you have kind of three steps in order to highlight uh, the political role of the declaration as a roadmap into the future. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I would add on from Mexico perspective, um, I think that we should be focusing on three main areas when we're talking about raising awareness. Awareness of the fishing value chain, 
blockchain and its interconnectedness. Awareness of the need to tackle the issue comprehensively. And thirdly, um, awareness of the need to be working collectively in different levels, local, regional and international. One way to do it, of course, are campaigns or promoting this kind of forum. And also, as I was mentioning in my last intervention, promoting resolutions within the UN. And that would be by itself a, a challenge. As my colleague was saying, we have resolutions in the UN General Assembly, CCPCJ in, in, uh, in the area of, of uh, criminal justice. We also have some realm to maneuver, even the Human Rights Council. But we must do this bearing in mind that we are building up or complementing the regime of IUU, mm. which will be spreading again uh, across all the board of different issues that we'll be dealing. Mm. Thank you. Well, of course, political awareness is, is very important, and that's why you see the Blue Justice uh, Initiative is, is so important. But um, I'd like to note that I, I was surprised with the number of countries that are taking part in, in, in this meeting today, uh, which says that uh, the awareness is there. Uh, we, of course, we have to keep pushing it uh, and we have to keep spreading our word regarding the importance of this issue. But the awareness is there. Uh, in, in, in our continent, you see, we are three ambassadors uh, speaking about this issue right now, but there are other countries that, that are interested in the issue. And every day I see uh, new countries that want to be engaged, that want to do something. And um, I agree with the fact that uh, the United uh, Nations system is, is, is a good place for us to address this issue and, and to keep working to spread our word uh, regarding the importance about fighting uh, illegal fisheries. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, I see we have uh, some time left. So um, I, I, was, I was wondering, now you, we have three ambassadors from uh, three important countries in, in Latin America. And we also see from, uh, from the list of participants at this conference that Latin America is very well represented. Um, it's, it, I believe it's one of the continents which are, are most represented in, in, the, in the countries that are participating. Um, could you say something about uh, the potential role of Latin America? What, uh, what, what, basically, what, what, is the, what is the role, what is the challenges of the region? And do you have any perspective on how, uh, if, if uh, as, as, as uh, the Brazilian ambassador said, that uh, to work regionally is important. But um, uh, what is the potential role of, uh, of Latin America? Valdemar? Thank yes. you. Thank you for the question. Well, first of all, uh, our nations uh, suffer uh, very much from these uh, scourges. Mm. Uh, illegal fishing, as we said, tax crime, uh, smuggling, uh, slave labor, and so on. Uh, regional cooperation, as I said, has been uh, addressed through this institution, which I mentioned, yeah. uh, in the South Pacific. Uh, but there is also a, a, another dimension, which is the losses that all of these countries suffer mm -hmm. from, from, uh, from this, uh, from this uh, uh, specific, uh, specific threats. Uh, for example, in Chile, only uh, through illegal fishing in one year and in one fishery, we lose about $300 million yearly. So you can imagine uh, uh, the losses, mm. the, the, the tax revenues uh, that our countries uh, are, are losing in terms of investing mm. uh, in, in, uh, in health, in education, mm. and so on. Mm. Uh, and the other thing that I wanted to highlight is our participation in the high-level panel for an, uh, a notional sustainable economy, uh, another uh, very important uh, Norwegian-led initiative. Uh, and these threats uh, not only were addressed through one of the reports, one of the blue papers, but they all are uh, hindering the emergence of a uh, of a of a, uh, a sustainable ocean economy. They they really do hinder this. Uh, so it's something that we should also address in a in a global perspective, hmm. in 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 terms of reaching its, its blue justice plus 
a sustainable ocean economy. Mm. It, it's something that, uh, that goes hand in hand. Mm. Thank you. Oh, that's, uh, thank you very much. Um, well, as for yeah. regional, if, if I may. Go ahead. Um, thank you. Um, <clears throat> how, how do we see regional cooperation in the future? Well, first of all, I would, I would invite us to take a look at what has been regional cooperation in the past, where Latin America has been playing a role, even in, in the negotiation of UNCLOS, it was really a very, very important uh, uh, participation and coordination of Latin American countries. Uh, still today, we are witnessing a very fruitful cooperation in matters related to this multidimensional problem that entails IUU, again, from transnational organized crime, drug, drug traffic and human rights, even uh, fiscal issues. From Mexico's part, if I may, of course, we've been playing, or we've been trying to play a critical role. We've been very active, and not only, for instance, in, in, uh, in the establishment of unique polos and its further development, in uh, sustainable development issues. We've been also leading uh, some initiatives on corruption, the Merida Convention, for instance. And of course, when we were dealing with implementation mechanism of the Palermo Convention on transnational organized crime. So I think as a region, we have solid basis to keep working both on raising awareness and on regional cooperation to tackle IUU. Thank you very much. Uh, we have... Um just a little bit more time before we have to move on. So uh, any last uh, minute uh, comment? I, I think that we should not forget that uh, Latin America is situated between the two most important oceans or two biggest oceans in the world, the Atlantic and the Pacific. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and those two countries, uh, those two oceans are very important to a huge number of countries in different ways. So I think that you see in, in, in in a larger perspective, uh, the contribution that uh, we can make to this discussion is the fact that we have different perspectives, that you see those issues affect us in different ways. But despite of that, uh, we are willing to sit down to discuss those problems and to find ways to cooperate mm -hmm. and to see how to go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, we, we're running out of time. It was a very interesting uh, discussion.